All right, guys. Let's get started with stage one. Um, so first things first, we got to download UCenter. Now I have already downloaded it, so I'm going to go through the uh, the setup of it. Let's see. So we just click on it. We're installing it. We're installing it, and we're installing it. I agree. Drivers. This is important right here. So I think what we want is this one right here. I believe that this one is it. Ublox GNSS sensor driver, because if we use the Windows USB serial driver, it doesn't play very well. And we might need to get rid of the USB, the Windows driver, which is, I haven't quite fully figured that one out yet, but, okay. So now what we do is, we go, we would, I already had this plugged in, but we go here, and we go to port, oh jeez. Port in it. Mine's Comp4. I knew there was Comp4 because I it was the only thing plugged in at the time. You plug it in, pick it. Uh, the other thing is we want to go to baud rate. We want to make sure at about. I like this one. I know it's worked well for me, so that's what I use. Um, and that's really we want to make sure that we can get this 3D DGNSS. And honestly, you just I just plugged it in and it worked. So uh, hopefully it's the same for you. Now, I experienced some issues with RTK lib, which we'll go to next. If I didn't open up this, it was a driver issue, and when I figure out fully what that is, but basically all you do is you open this up, start RTK lib, and then you're good to go. If you open, if you have UCenter open for some reason, it works. So we'll do that now. So I got my RTK lib from this rtkexplorer.com. Go to RTK lib code, and then I just downloaded this one right here demo 5 b 29 b for some time for some reason C didn't really work for me I am using B so if we go to that well basically you download that unzip it double click on RTK Navi and that should bring you here so to get started here we gotta set up our input streams uh, so starting with the rover my rover is a Ublox Neo M8 T and my antenna is a Talisman 4710 and so we select serial because we're using a serial connection through USB. Select our options. Uh, mine's COM4 at 1152. That's what we just set in UCenter. Uh, so that's all good. CMD. Um, this one here, it's all included. So we hit load. It's included with RTK lib, that thing that you downloaded. I use this 5 hertz USB MAT1. Um, oops. Okay. And make sure they're on. You're going to need those. Um, format is Ublox. So for my Ntrip client, now this is where it gets interesting. I am using a cores network from a local provider. I won't say who, but it's a cores network that is free for me to use. I signed up online, but basically if you have to have another uh, antenna, I guess so be it. Um, you can look online and try and find a cores network in your area. Um, Maybe one day if I have the cash, I'll buy another antenna. And anyways, so I go Ntrip client. Ntrip is the best way to do this because if you're trying to do this over a radio link, your distance just, it's not going to work as well. And mine's a course network. So uh, so again, we go to our options, you enter into the host site, the port number, the mount point, and your username and password. Whatever provider you use for this should give you all five um, of these. This should give you all the information that you need. Um, if you're using, what is that, RTK to go or something like that, there's there's online um, resources for that too, to set that up. Uh, command, we don't have any commands for this. Um, and then mine is RTCM3 data. Um, for mine, I needed a longitude and a latitude of the nearest base station. And so I just typed in the longitude and latitude of my location general location and this one will always get me the same base station and so yeah basically if you wanted to use single solution you might be able to do that I've never been able to get a fix with it but anyways uh, so I had to enter in that and that's about it for the input streams now let's go to options starting off with setting one we want kinematic solution because that's going to be an RTK. Now, for for troubleshooting, 
you can use single and DGPS and all that kind of stuff. You can you can totally do that. Um, just to just to see. I remember because I downloaded RTK Lib straight from the actual website, and the only the only one that I could get was a moving base for some reason. There's something wrong with it. And then I downloaded the RTK Explorer one, that B twenty nine B or whatever. Uh, and then it worked. It just magically turned on. My my satellite or my deal can my receiver can take GPS, GLONASS. I can't even remember. So I just selected them all, and <laughs> maybe it's better to take some of those off. I just left most of these the same, uh, and that's about it, really. Um, something for future use. You can hit save here, and then it'll save this as a dot conf dot conf file which you can then use for um, if you wanted to do this in a Raspberry Pi you could use that as your conf file you have to adjust it a little bit but um, maybe I'll make another video about that um, now for me that's it you just hit start and stage one should be done you should be seeing satellites at your rover you should be seeing satellites for your base and it should just work basically uh, let's give it a minute and and yep so there's some viable satellites and now they're gone I'm inside so it, a lot of times it doesn't work inside but anyways that's all I did to get uh, RTK hope this helps all right I uh, I'm gonna leave it off here See if I can get a solution. Waiting for it, waiting for it. Waiting. Okay, there's a float. And eventually, if you got better satellites, you could get a fix. If I uh, had a better view of the sky, I think I'd get a fix, and then my accuracy would exponentially get better. So, yeah, that's basically it. So, we're connected. We are up and running. Um. I'm going to leave you off here for stage one. This is stage one. So we have some high precision. I went out and I tested this outside with a really clear sky. Right now I don't have that. And I was able to get, you know, around 5 to 10 centimeter accuracy, which to me was good enough. Um, so, yeah, I hope this helps someone. And I'll see you at stage two where we connect this to Egg Open GPS. All right, thanks.